The first time I met Pharrell, I was about 15 years old. Um, I had a friend who was in Miami uh, who was nice enough to um, bring me to meet Pharrell. So I had like a little CD I made by myself, you know, with three songs on it. And I went over to meet Pharrell and it was amazing, like walking in the room, you know, it was almost like meeting Mozart. You know, he was on the piano and it was very dark, it feels like a dungeon and he was like Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> very down to earth person. So. He, he really enjoyed the music and he was telling me, you know, you need to work on, you know, writing, telling your story, making a complete story. You need to work on, um, you know, picking the, the right chords to, to play with and, um, you know, eventually just how to, how to get your message across. But, you know, ultimately he told me, if you want to do music, it's a sacrifice, you know. He said, you're so young um, and the reason it's just a sacrifice is because, you know, you're going to have friends who are going to be, you know, doing this and getting into trouble and going to parties or, you know, even you know, doing, doing normal teenager stuff, but you have to be really focused and really working on your music in order to develop you know, and grow. And for me, that's when I really knew that I wanted to make this into a profession. Where I belong, for me, it really just means, you know, Showing, showing everyone, showing the world where I belong, you know, exactly who I am and, and exactly what my music sounds like and, uh, you know, really let them into my world. So, for me, it was just felt right and, and the name felt, you know, it was appropriate. So, for me, the album, you know, really tells a, a story from top to bottom. You know, the first, from the first song, the first song of the album is called Sun Is Gonna Rise and the last song is called Goodbye. Um, so I believe it tells a, a you know a great story, and uh, you know it has an, you know ups and downs, and and uh, really talks about relationships and growing into you know who you are and finding who you are as an individual. Um, so for me, this is a, a great album for myself because that's the p the period of life I am in now, you know, discovering myself and, and who I am. What I really enjoy doing for me is is taking you know so many different sounds and mixing them together. Because for me, I come from an era where, you know, growing up I had iTunes and I had the internet. So for me, it was easy to access so many different sounds of music, and I did. I listened to, to everything from Rolling Stones to Marvin Gaye to Bob Dylan to Bob Marley, you know, even to, to hip hop. My brother was into to hip hop and more of the, the R&B and, and, and rap world. So, and my dad was into disco, so he was like Bee Gees, Barry White, and you know, Lou Rawls. So, for me, I had a wide spectrum of music. And also, Miami is the very same way. It's very diverse, it's full of you know, people from all over the world. So, the same thing I try to achieve in music, bring so many different sounds from across the world and bring them all together. So there's like a, you know, a new sound created. Liar Liar, me and Pharrell originally wrote about two years ago. Um, but when we started playing the song, we really came up with the chords first, you know, this, this, this great feeling and this great beat. And, uh, you know, then we started to, to think about a concept and we, we, you know, we decided that everyone in life has been in a situation where they've given, you know, someone too much trust, whether you're in a relationship or whether it's your friend or someone you know. And at first, maybe you've given them too much trust and you don't, really don't know who they are yet. I wonder if I take you there. Would you believe in fairy tales? Oh. For me, Paradise on Earth is, is truly in music. You know, every time I, I hear a song or every time I'm listening to music, I really get lost. Uh, the directors under that video were very, you know, young kids as well, and, and really young. You know, one of them was younger than myself, so it's probably 20 years old at this point. So, very talented. They, they really came up with the concept themselves. They're very talented. You know, the, they're called Brother Films. And, um, they used a lot of photography. They took you know, thousands of pictures all day. It took two days to, to shoot the music video. And uh, it really incorporates a lot of pictures and that's what you get this moving effect. It's almost a shutter effect. And you know, it's very interesting the way they also did the, the post-production and, and brought out certain you know, aspects when you know, they, they illustrated palm trees around the city or, or in my body you see palm trees but I was in a cold place. So it's really showing that anything is possible and, you know, you know, really showing through your, your vision and through what you want to achieve, paradise could be anywhere.
When good girls gone bad, they gone forever. Yeah. But if she gone with me, then she gone or better. Yeah. Oh, me without you, that's the longest never. Living like sunshine, man, we on forever. Yeah. Hey Amen, I've learned my lesson. Got a good girl, count your blessings. Instead of spending them up on sex, and good girls don't grow on trees. The song Good Girls, you know, is, is actually another song I, I also wrote with Pharrell Williams, you know. Um, it's interesting, he, he really didn't help on the production side of this song. Um, it was originally produced by a, a drummer who, was, who I was playing with live and his cousin, um, Daryl Robinson and Anthony Bell. They sent over this, this amazing guitar and, and drum beat and, you know, I heard it and instantaneously I was like, man, I have to, you know, this is something I want to write to. So I was singing to it, singing to it, singing to it and, you know, Luckily, Pharrell happened to be passing by, and he was coming in to just check out, you know, how everything was and check check out how I was doing. And he walked in the studio too and was like, "Oh, well, he's like, I like this." <laughs> he sat on the couch <laughs> and he was like, "Oh." So, so then we started to, you know, then we started to write, and um, you know, we came up with this this uh, this concept. Wyclef, I, I you know, I had the opportunity of of meeting when I was a little later in my career. I met him when I was about 18 years old, so for me, it was like three years now. Um, a similar way that I, you know, to the way I met Pharrell, um, I had a friend in the, you know, a friend who knew a publicist to Wyclef in the music business, and this publicist actually was was happening to go visit Wyclef at his house, and was nice enough to bring some of my music along, and she brought him the music and she played it for him, and, and he really enjoyed it, and he gave me a, a call that same night. I think it was even a video, and he was like, you know, I can't wait to work with you, like really, you know, enjoy the the, the music, and he was like playing the guitar. And I was like, wow, crazy, because Wyclef is someone else I, I looked up to from a very young age. You know, his work with the Fugees and, of course, his solo work. And, but long story short, I went over, flew over to New York, um, went to go visit him in, in Jersey, and we, we just hit it off. We had a connection, you know. And we both had a similar taste in music and a similar love for reggae music, being that we both, you know, grew up in a similar region around the Caribbean. So we really just hit it off and he began to teach me so much about the recording process, you know. I like to think that Pharrell laid the foundation and really taught me, you know, how to, how to begin making music and, and really laid a solid foundation and Wyclef just taught me details, little details and, and, and cool tricks and, and, a, and a great way to look at recording. Paradise song.